Alright guys, welcome to the sermon. Um, and as you're about to find out, um, I've seen in here that I get real excited when it comes to God's Word. God's Word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I have no doubt in my mind that's God's promise that you'll be blessed by hearing God's Word. So uh, sit back, uh, get comfortable, uh, whatever you need to do, enjoy the sermon. Amen. Is there somebody? Is there somebody got a birthday? You want to? Y'all want to? All right. I don't know how to play it, but we'll do it. Y'all gonna stand up? <laughs> See, this reminds me of like being out on the porch. Hey, Randy, do this one. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, to Jesus, right? Happy birthday. I'm supposed to be singing. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. All right. Good morning. I think this cold weather slowed everybody down, especially out on the street. Well, some of us. And I uh, thought it would be good to slow the music down and just uh, may the Holy Spirit move upon your hearts in a different way. Amen? Amen. Before I get started, though, um, um, just as he sang about how prayer changes you sometimes. Sir? It's not. <laughs> yeah. Live show. Um, the United Cowboy Church. <laughs> like he was singing, um, sometimes prayer changes you. It does. It does when I pray. Um, specifically last night. Um, um, guys, if you've never done this, I, I, I pray to God that you try it. Um, and if you used to do it, I pray that you start doing it again. But there's something that God will change within your heart if you get on your knees before Him and just talk to Him. Amen? So I pray you do that at your house. But last night I got on my knees next to my bed and I just prayed that everybody be safe coming to church this morning. The ones that were coming, the ones that tried. We didn't want anybody to get hurt. Um, but let me pray real quick. Father God, I just thank You for today. I thank You, Lord, how much You've already looked after us. Lord, I thank you that uh, one of your hidden blessings that we don't realize sometimes is how much you do protect us. Uh, Lord, you even said in your word, uh, through Jesus, keep us from the evil one. So, Lord, I just thank you for your blessing of protection, not just over us individually, but our families. And, um, Lord, I just pray that this morning you protect everybody's heart, and may you uh, plant a seed that nobody can touch. And then somebody may come water it, and then may you give the increase of salvation. Uh, Lord, I thank you that every once in a while you tap me on the shoulder and say, Hey, don't get complicated. Just keep it simple so everybody can understand it. So, Lord, we love you and we ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, um, this morning me and my boy got um, my truck unstuck and... Um, I was going back and forth taking kids from our house to grandma and grandpa's house up the road and then the clock started sneaking up on me and I was like, well, I need to change and, you know, every once in a while I think it's good to come to church, especially cowboy church, um, just as you are. You can get dressed up to come to church, but you don't have to be dressed up to come to church. Amen? And y'all seen me up here, if you've been here before, every once in a while I want to get all fancy and pretty clothes on and get put a little vest on 
for the Lord. I believe it is an awesome and honorable thing to show reverence to God. But at the same time, as you're going to learn today, that God is not just King of kings and Lord of lords. He's also our friend. And uh, if he goes with us daily, then he also sees you in your dirty clothes. Amen? So it's some people, uh, I don't know, maybe got this impression that, that um, God only sees you within the church walls. No, he sees you in the living room. He sees you in the bedroom. He sees you at the quick check. He sees you with your good clothes, your pretty clothes, and your dirty clothes. So he sees you. Amen? Um, and sometimes I want to just do this to make sure that nobody ever not comes to church because of what they're wearing or what they're not wearing. Because um, last time I looked, God, uh, God died for everybody. Amen? So uh, there is a time to reverence the Lord, and then there's a time to let Him be our friend. Amen? Um, almost forgot, Wit. Thank you, brother. As y'all can see, the, the ice was sliding down off the roof. So when we leave here, can we please make sure we leave out the front door so nobody gets a little goose egg in the back of the head? It'd probably be a big goose egg. Yeah, I thought it was a little earthquake going on. But uh, I never heard that happen inside a building. But today, um, as y'all have already heard, Dave McMahon was going to come up here and sing today and testify and give testimony. He's a, also a prison evangelist. But as I was talking to him on the phone, I asked him how far away did he live, and he said four and a half hours. I said, well, you can just go ahead and double that uh, minimum if you're going to try to get on up here. And he asked if he could cancel. So with that, um, I knew I needed to prepare a sermon. And usually a good sermon to always have ready is a sermon called Always Be Ready. But I don't ever want to just be saying something just to be saying it. Um, Something that really got a hold of me, and I'm not saying it got a hold of y'all, but it got a hold of me going in church. Sometimes things just seemed very rehearsed, very routine, and there was no compassion behind it. There was no true, sincere intentions. God says, serve the Lord with a sincere heart. And sometimes the Lord will put you in situations that will make you nervous because you will be more sincere. Amen? I believe some people's prayers this morning come to church was more sincere that they didn't slide off the road. Amen. You can call out to the Lord, and then there's times you can call out to the Lord. Amen. So I didn't want to assume anything, so I asked the Lord. I was like, Lord, what, what do um, you want me to preach on? Or what do you want me to talk about today? I don't want to just say something to be saying it. I want you to tell me what to do. And, um, and some people look at you kind of with their head crooked when you say that. God talks to you, but... The Bible does say, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger he will not follow. So, God speaks to his people. God the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart. Um, sometimes we just don't know how to recognize it. One of the ways to recognize one way the Lord will speak to you is that you're not even thinking about something that just pops in your mind. And then when you try to disregard it or blow it off, and it comes right back. And you try to blow it off and disregard it, and it comes right back. That's the Lord speaking to you. And the one way you can confirm that is if it lines up with God's Word. That's why it's so important to know God's Word. Amen? That is how the Holy Spirit speaks to us sometimes. Sometimes through ice. <laughs> Amen. Remind me of the Scripture. It says uh, there will come a day that where He will shake everything. Amen? The only way you're not going to get shaken is if you're attached to the one that can't be shaken. Amen? That's the Lord. But this is the scripture that kept coming to my mind, and I want to read it to you all. I'm going to read it first, and then I'll tell you where it's at. Some of you may know where it's at when I start reading it. The Bible says two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. If you believe that, say amen. 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 Let's turn to Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please. Now, as we're turning here, um, I don't ever... It, sometimes we can get relaxed in church and we think, well, that's just a scripture from the Bible. No, it is the living Word of God. It is a written Word of God. And God said that all the scriptures are God-breathed, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen? 
And on top that off, the wisest man that ever walked the earth besides Jesus Christ is King Solomon. And he wrote this book. So you can imagine if somebody said, you know what, you want to talk to this guy, no, we're going to meet him at Quick Check, and he's a genius. He has a photographic memory. He knows everything. You ask him a question, and he, he, he can answer it, no matter what you ask him. Um, you can imagine how that would be an interesting person to talk to. That would be an interesting person to sit down and have a burger with. You say, I mean, I just want to sit down and talk to you, ask you about all the things in life. Well, King Solomon was the wisest man that walked the earth other than Jesus Christ himself. So these are the words inspired by the Holy Spirit from King Solomon. And the subtitle of my Bible says, The Value of a Friend. Amen? The Value of a Friend. And I pray this just touches y'all today. What good is it if it doesn't move you to do something? Amen? Amen. Chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one. Right off the bat, we find out that man is not made to be by himself. And when I say man, I mean mankind. Amen? It's not just man and the women are excluded from this sermon. It says two are better than one. It is always better to have at least two with you. Two are better than one. And I love this because... The Lord started speaking to my heart last night when I was finishing up this sermon. He didn't just say two big people are better than one. Two smart people are better than one. Two rich people are better than one. Two poor people are better. He, did, he said two are better than one. Amen? That is the equation. That's God's math problem. Two are always better than one. I remember when my wife went up north to visit her family up in Missouri. She's used to all this snow and ice. And um, it's silly. To say this, but y'all, if you've been coming here, you know I'm not shy to throw my business out on the table, as in to show you that preachers are human too, um, that they're a sinner too, they need Jesus just as much as everybody else. Um, well, you know, I'm used to sleeping with mama. I'm used to sleeping with my wife. So you never realize how used you get to knowing that somebody is there. Amen? So, and now she's gone for like a week. Well, now I start paying attention to the little cricks in the night. And he starts giving me little eebie jeebies. And I'm sitting there, I'm literally thinking this in my bedroom, going, you know, that's silly. I'm 37 years old. There's no reason why I should be afraid of the dark. And I really wasn't, but you kind of, well, what was that? I mean, did somebody open my door? I'm not. And your mind just starts racing. And then Jesse jumped up, or one of, one of the kids were, was with me. Um, and they, they ran in the room and jumped in bed with me. Immediately, I felt better. I felt safer. That child can't defend me. I'd have to defend that child if there was somebody in the house. But the, I believe that shows God's word is true. Two are better than one. For some reason, it doesn't matter who's with you, but if somebody's with you, you feel better. Amen? You're driving down these roads. You, you kind of kind of jacked up a little bit, but if you have somebody laughing with you and kind of freaking you out, telling jokes while you're the next to you, you get, you get a little bit better while you're driving down the road. So two are better than one. Um, because they have a good reward for their labor. This morning I got up at about 5.30, and since 5.30 to about 6.45, I was trying to get my truck unstuck. I went through two different ropes, busted them, and I w wasn't doing good. As soon as my boy came out there, we got unstuck. Now, I'm not saying my boy's a genius and he really helped me out, but I'm saying for some reason that it worked out. Amen? I'm not trying to drive this point home too much, but at the same time, we've got to understand that when the simple, practical applications of God's Word, and we see it right there in action, that's what makes us fall in love with God's Word. That's what makes us want to dig into it more. Something so simple. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, especially today, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. It's very rare. I mean, everybody in here is human. Everybody in here has got a beating heart. There's times that you can be emotionally drained. You can be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Or you can be angry. Or you can be happy. But what's good is that you don't, if you're not by yourself, you don't have to go at this all by yourself. If somebody's there with you and you're down, they can lift you up. And vice versa. Amen? For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him... Who is alone when he falls. That means distressed and always worried and depressed. Somebody who's by themselves will get um, to where they're depressed. And this doesn't just mean a, a spouse, obviously. This means a friend, 
or just a companion, a brother or sister in Christ, I know that when I come to church and I see other people, I immediately get encouraged. Amen? We all need that. I, I think everybody in here can agree that we were not made to be people of a, all by ourselves. We need each other. Amen? Amen. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. You are a blessed person if you have somebody to help you up. Amen? Again, I love it when the Lord repeats something. If, he, if you ever read God's Word and it seems like He says, Behold, or I tell you the truth, or he, he says, I'll say it again. If He does that, it means it's something really He wants us to pay attention to because usually we can get to listening to something and we're not paying attention to it. But he says, Again, if two lie down, here's another reason why two is better than one. If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? A uh, little short story, when I was um, in the Army, we, we spent a lot of time out in the woods, and my ranger buddy was from Brunswick, New Jersey. He not like Texas folk. <laughs> he, uh, he, he was very aggressive. He's a very aggressive man, and let's just say he had a very aggressive language. Amen? That's about as nice as I could say it in church. And... Uh, one night we were sitting out in the, in the woods, and we were on a perimeter, and while we were out there, I'm freezing to death. I'm, I'm one of those folks that don't like the cold too much. I'd rather it be 115 degrees out. Um, well, if you've ever been outside for an ex extended period of time, you know the ground will literally suck the heat from your body. That's why uh, you need some type of bedding on the ground. And I'm sitting there, and <laughs> I'm freezing. You've got to lay next to your ranger buddies. All right, in case one's awake for security, one's sleeping, vice versa, just like the Bible is talking about there, up above in verse 9. And I'm sitting there freezing. I'm literally got to the point where I'm almost stopped shaking. And I'm looking over at him. He's a big old guy. He's like 6'4", 260, and he's all muscle. He's just a big guy. And I looked over, and I saw like it, his legs were just sitting there. I was like, man, all right. And this is literally how I was thinking. I was going, I can grab a hold of him and get warm. Well, that that's not right. You should not do that. <laughs> and I was sitting there thinking, no, let's think this all the way through. If he wakes up and he gets mad at me, he'll hit me and we'll get in a fight and you'll get warm fighting. I mean, when you get cold, cold, you will go to extreme measures to get back warm. You, you will just find a way to get warm. I said, and if he doesn't, then I'll hold on to him and I'll get warm by holding on to him. Actually, we'll both get warm. And he's used to the cold weather up in Jersey, so it wouldn't bother him too much. So I grabbed a hold of him, and I remember him punching me right in the top of the head. Bam! He says, what are you doing, Norton? I said, man, I, I, just, I see it two ways. Either you can just roll over and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go back to sleep. Or we can fight, and you know I'm down with that too. And we can get warm fighting. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. Obviously, there's certain ways you don't need to do that. But you see the point. If you're all by yourself, all by yourself in life, you have nobody to help you keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Guys, and this is not just, this is what I love about God's Word. It doesn't just speak to you physically, it speaks to you spiritually. There's a bunch of people in here in the midst of a crowded room, you're emotionally all by yourself. For whatever reason, you can be all by yourself in the midst of a crowd emotionally. And God says you shouldn't do that. You should join up. Amen? But how can one be warm alone? We're not made to do that. Though one be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. I know that there, everybody in here comes from all walks of life. But if you've ever had anybody come up against you wanting to fight, they're real quick to come get you and just you. But if you've got a friend sitting there, they'll second guess it. Amen? Same thing spiritually. When I was um, praying last night and going over these scriptures, I felt like the Lord say this. There's many people out here that will pray, and they will pray all by themselves. They won't join anybody in agreement with anybody else. If you want to start seeing your prayer life move, grab a hold of a brother or sister in Christ and let them be in prayer with you for it. If you ever hear people talking and say, hey, I want you to be in prayer with me on something, that's what they're talking about. If your prayer's not moving, how about you join with another person in that prayer, amen? That's the reason why people pray at the end of a service. I used to wonder why they did that. It's because there's power in agreement. 
God never wants anybody by themselves right here at Thanksgiving dinner back up there. I don't even know why I said it. It just came out of my mouth. I said, nobody stands alone in here. Everybody grab a hold of somebody. And that's the way it should be. Amen? We're not made to be by ourselves. We're made to be with people, people of our kind. Amen? The one may be overpowered by another. Two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. There is uh, types and shadows all in that, obviously, with you and a brother, or you and a sister in Christ, or you and your spouse with the Lord. Unity together with Christ Jesus, or God the Holy Spirit, is not easily broken. Do you know why? Because you can't break God. Amen? And I know you all are supposed to hear that in church. You're, you expect that type of language coming from the preacher. But it's true. Amen? This stuff does not easily break when the God is involved. Amen? 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 Praise the Lord. I might get excited today. Another thing I love about God's Word is He'll give advice and then He'll show you an example of it. Amen? Turn to Mark chapter 6, please. Somebody came up to me and said, Jason, I'm not trying to threaten you, but you better not have one of those three-minute sermons today after driving through that ice. I said, careful, you get the other side of me, and we'll preach all day. <laughs> yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, aside, before we jump off into Mark chapter 6, praise the Lord, a praise report. Um, last week, um, it was finalized. Um, through a, a few different um, dominoes that needed to fall, the Lord answered prayer um, through um, some of you here, some of you that are not here. But December 26th, Lord willing, still, um, I will be flying to Uganda, Africa with Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah is the Nigerian family that comes to church. He's not here today with his family. Um, and... Uh, that's the other thing that got me with my clothes this morning. I was sitting there talking to the Lord. I was like, Lord, I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody. I don't even want to appear that, that, that would cause somebody issues in church by seeing how I'm dressed. And the first thing that popped up in my mind is me ministering to people in Africa. Guys, you know that they don't have a bunch of pretty clothes out where we're going. Amen. And if we minister that way, then it's okay to minister that way at home in church. Amen. Amen. So that was a praise report. I'll be gone two weeks up there. We fly from Dallas to Houston, Houston to Doha, northeast corner of Saudi Arabia, and then we go into Entebbe, uh, Uganda, Africa. So y'all keep that in your prayers. If that runs across your mind, please pray. Amen? Um, the talking about the preaching all, all uh, for a long time. Um, we have a crusade on New Year's Eve. It starts at 6 p.m. December 31st. Guess what time it finishes? January 1st, 6 a.m., 12 hours of ministering and praying for people and praising the Lord. And this is out in the middle of the open, out in front of everybody. It's right next to the equator. Jeremiah says, Pastor, get ready. Africans love church. I was like, imagine. Imagine that. He did. I, I, that's my Uganda try to accent. I don't know. <laughs> A little redneck twist with it. I don't know if it works. All right, Mark chapter 6, please. Verses 7. We'll go to verse 13. This, we, we had the advice, God's word, in Ecclesiastes, and here is an example of, the, of Jesus sending them out exactly how he says in his word, um, a biblical principle about two is better than one. Verse 7, And he called the twelve to himself, and he began to send them out two by two. And he gave them power over unclean spirits. How many of y'all believe that that is still true today? Amen. Amen. You know, unclean spirits didn't stop working just because certain people don't believe it. Amen. It's still true today. Verse 8. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. All right. Literally, God's Word is saying this. When you go out to minister, you go out to help somebody, there's one major important thing you're going to need. Somebody with you. Amen? Why? Because when you go and minister, you go to help somebody, sometimes you ain't going to know what to say. Amen? But they will, or vice versa. And here's an awesome thing to do. Y'all ready? If you're ever trying to help somebody out or pray for somebody, the one that came with you can pray for you while you're praying for them. Amen? 
While my dad was up here singing, I was praying for him that the Lord speaks through him, that he helps him and, and, and goes through with that. We, we need prayer. Amen? So he says one of the most important things is don't go by yourself. All right. Verse 8. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper, and their money belts. A person coming with you is more important than food and money. All right. Verse 10. Also he said to them, in whatever place you enter a house... Stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out and preached that people should repent. Guys, there is a misunderstanding with the word repent in church. The very first, you look back in the Gospels, the very first word that Jesus said in, once he started his ministry, he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent is a very important word, but repent doesn't mean just, Lord, forgive me of that, rock on, I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and do it again tomorrow. That's not repent. Rem repent means to stop what you're doing, turn around and go the other direction. Now some people in here, you might immediately feel condemned, and there's a difference between feeling condemned or convicted, amen? The devil condemns you. But God the Holy Spirit will convict you. There's a difference. Amen? Have you ever been corrected in love? Raise your hand. All right. Anybody been corrected with not love? All right. There's a huge difference. So he'll, he'll show you that difference. Um, so they went out and preached that people should repent. Repent means to literally change your way of thinking. You used to think this way was good. Rock on with it. Everything's fine. Good to go. If you want to know if you truly repent, now you sit there and go, that's not good. I, don't, I can't explain it. I don't know why, but there's just something now about me that I don't need to do that. And I'm going to try to stop doing that. That's how probably a baby in Christ would explain that. Amen? Repent. We must change our ways. Verse 13, And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. If you believe that, say amen. 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 The most important thing, when Jesus sends people out to minister, He sends them out. Two by two. Amen? So if you feel led by the Lord to go do something for somebody, don't go by yourself. And if you do, call somebody to pray for you while you're gone. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. You ain't got to turn there. Talking about friends. Um, well, the Bible tells us who not to make friends with. Amen? And not just talk about friendship and what that looks like, but it tells us who not to make friends with. It says, make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, do not go. At least you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. Many people get jacked up on the word soul. Soul means your mind and your emotions. Many traps with your emotions. It'll mess up your emotions. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, do not go. At least you learn his ways and set a snare for you. Now you've got to ask yourself, why would you, if you went with that man, why would you learn his ways? Because he's got a strong personality and he can overpower you. Amen? Now this is what jacked me when I started reading the Bible. One of the first books I, I started d jumping off into more was the book of Proverbs. I didn't realize how much... The Bible was calling me a fool. you talking about humbling. Because I was that hot-tempered man. I still am if I ain't careful and stay in Christ. Amen? We all have our flavors of messing up. Amen? But it's saying, make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, do not go. At least you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. This is what also, right behind that, the Lord encouraged me with. If you read the scriptures where Jesus went and raised a little girl from the dead, he said, Talitha komi, means little girl, arise. On the Mount of Transfiguration and at the Garden of Gethsemane, he kept calling three guys off to the side. He says, you, come here. You, come here. On the Mount of Transfiguration, out of, there's 12 disciples, he says, you, 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 you come here. You nine, you stay right there. He says that. Now what do these three men have in common? They're all hot-tempered. Once Peter, and anybody that reads the Bible knows that Peter is quick at the mouth. Amen? He's the first one to open his mouth and say something. The other two, Jesus calls them and nicknames them the sons of thunder. They're fiery. They're brothers, and they will get after you quick. 
But why did he keep calling them off to the side? Because he knew once he won their heart, those men are not going to back up. That would be the same man in the honky-tonk parking lot that said, 50 guys stand up and you just got him excited. He says, okay, that'll be more fun now. Right? Once they win that person over to the Lord, that person has a strong personality and he's not going to back up. God could then now use that mouthpiece for not hurting people, condemning people. He'll use it for his glory to save people. Make sense? So if you meet, if you have a hot-tempered person in your family, don't run away from them. Pray for them. Because that person will change once God the Holy Spirit gets a hold of them. And I'm telling you, he'll set the whole town ablaze. Amen? And not only will he do it, they'll be convincing of it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm. Y'all turn to James chapter 4. That got me encouraged. After I read Proverbs 4, I was like, Lord, <laughs> you don't want to use me. I keep, I just called a fool like 20-something times in the book of Proverbs. He said, wait, I ain't done with you. You know how, how you know when God ain't done with you? You're still breathing. Glory. That's right. James chapter 4, verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Put that up. All right. Go um, verses 1 through 5. Subtitle of my Bible says, Pride promotes strife. Pride can be a very painful addiction to overcome. James chapter 4, verse 1. Here we go. Where do wars and fights come from among you? You ever wonder why everybody's always fighting? Amen? The Bible has the answer right here. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. you imagine that once we get home in glory with the Lord? How many things will we go? Man, it was that simple. Literally, right now, you ain't got to raise your hand. Take your own spiritual inventory. How many things in your life that you're really desiring right now, you're really wanting right now, and you ain't even asked the Lord for it? The Bible says you do not have because why? You don't even ask. How about we start asking the Lord? Well, sometimes this goes rampant in the church. No, the Lord's busy. No, I'll pray for other people. I won't pray for myself. That's not biblical. John chapter 17, guess who Jesus prayed for first? Himself. And he was sinless. Amen? You pray for yourself. We need to change that in the church. Amen? You pray for yourself. We need to ask the Lord of these things. And then he says, well, yeah, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. That means you ask for the wrong reasons that you may spend it on your pleasures. I mean, you realize that our pleasures will get us in trouble. Amen? Amen. Verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship, here it is, friendship with the world is in an enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Amen? If, if you find yourself getting angry with this world, fed up with this world, anxious about all this stuff, it might not just be because you're being unbiblical, it might be because you're being very biblical. Because the Lord is getting angry with this world. Amen? Hmm. i go for a long time. Y'all know what wrath means? Wrath means nostrils flared out. In the great tribulation, God will pour out His wrath on earth. Now you imagine when you see somebody angry. Yeah, some people can be intimidating, some not so much. You imagine somebody coming at you with their nostrils flared out. They've had enough. That will be the time where God has had enough. His nostrils will come against this earth with nostrils flare out. All right, verse 5. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain? Translation. He's not saying it for no reason. God's Word is true. We should never look at this book like any other book. Amen? It is the written Word of God. He didn't write this stuff because he was kidding, because he was joking. He was serious. And these, these words hold true. Amen? Or do you not think that Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? 
Our God is a jealous God. You can imagine your boyfriend, girlfriend, your husband and wife, or even a, even a, uh, a father-son or a mother-daughter relationship or friendship. If you've been real tight for a long time and then suddenly one just walks away like they don't want nothing to do with you, how bad that hurts. That is the scenario that's going on when God says, he, He's jealous that you're now falling in love with this, this worldly stuff again. He wants you to fall in love with Him. Okay, let me save everybody a lot of heartache here. You ready for this? Everybody in here, including myself, has a natural tendency to turn towards the world and go to it. It's like a bug light. We go to it and it just zaps you, right? We have a natural tendency to do that. But the Bible has a, a cure for that. The great physician has some, some, an antidote that will help you. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. So that if we get in this daily, if we hear the word daily, if we come to church, or you ain't got to come to this church, but just go to church, amen? Go somewhere where they're preaching the Bible, and then that will keep you in a good relationship with the Lord. If not, the Bible says that for a man who, who comes here, he realizes what man he is, but if he turns away from the Bible and he walks off, he forgets what kind of man he is. You don't even realize it anymore. So don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen? Y'all still with me? Amen. Praise the Lord. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 Turn to John chapter 15, our last set of scriptures. I guess I need to turn there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Okay. Daddy, you mind coming back up? Can you come back up? After I read this, you can just start playing. After I'm done saying a few things. Guys, I'm going to read these scriptures. Praise God not to be routine. I'm going to read these scriptures. And there's many times, I probably heard a thousand sermons before one of them stuck. Before one of them shot me right in the heart and I went, wow, I need the Lord. But even, I mean, think about this. Let's just say hypothetically that you had every single question answered in your life. Every single one of them. Let's just say you had somebody that was a Bible genius that came down and they just explained every scripture to you that now you had nothing but aha moments. At the end of that thought, at the end of that life, you still, you will still have to go, yes, I believe. You still have to step out on faith. For some reason, people think that faith is, no, I need to, to, to know for sure that it's without a doubt the right thing to do. But faith is a substance of things, what? Hoped for. So faith, stepping out on faith, saying, you know what, I heard you talk, but I'm really hoping what you said is true. Amen? I'm really, and it's the evidence of things not seen. That means that as I come to the end of my rope, I'm sitting here, Evidence of things not seen. I ain't seen it all. But I'm going to prove by me stepping that I believe it. I'm going to step out on faith that I believe this Jesus Christ is real. I believe not only is he the King of kings and Lord of lords, but he is my friend. He wants to be your friend. He wants to talk to you all day long. Amen? So I pray after I read these scriptures that you don't just think it's summing up the sermon. You don't just see it as, okay, we had church today. I hope you see it as the Word of God. And you step out on faith. Whatever is bothering you, you ask the Lord. There is nothing hard for Him. That's why I can say this with total confidence. There is nothing hard for God. You ask Him to explain something to you. You ask Him to make whatever yuck feeling inside you to go away or to explain why it won't. And God will do that for you. Why? Because he loves you. If the man died for us, I think he could explain something to us. Amen? Amen. He does not want us to stay hidden. Amen. John chapter 15, verse 9. We'll go to 17. This is Jesus talking, red letter. 
As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you. You want His joy? You must remain in Him. Amen? How do you do that, Jason? You stick to His Word. You pray. You talk to Him. You be His friend. And that your joy may be full. Not only can we have joy, we can have full joy. Amen? And guys, I'm going to tell you something. Joy is different than happy. Joy will make you want to dance. Happy will make you just want to smile. Happy makes the, the face change. Joy makes the whole body change. Amen? You may have this joy in full. My joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another. Why? How? He gave us a standard. As I have loved you. How should we love each other? Just as Jesus loved us. How did he do it? Yet while we were still sinners, he died for the ungodly. Yet while they make you mad, you love them anyway. Yet while they offended you, you love them anyway. Yet while they hurt your feelings, you love them anyway. And agape love is a, is a choice that you choose to love. I know we got family in here, and family makes family mad. But you can choose to love them anyway. We, we've grown to a generation that gives up way too easy. We quit way too fast. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that to lay down one's life for what? For his friends. Now y'all think about that. God Almighty, who created heaven and earth, everything. I mean, one of the stars is named Betelgeuse, and you can wrap 292 trillion earths inside of one star. And he created all of them, and he knows them all by name. That person is saying, you know what? I want to be your friend. Now check that out. He wants to be our friend. Man, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Verse 15, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. There is nothing that he's trying to hide from his children. Amen? There's nothing. You know what it's all wrapped up in? Guys, I know it's Christmas is coming up, but check this out. Everything that the Father made known to Him is made known to us. What does that mean? Y'all look at me real quick. We're almost done. How is that wrapped up? Everything that the Father told Jesus, He has now made it known to us. How is that possible? What's well, in the Bible? It's all wrapped up in the written. Yeah, but I can't put this Bible on me. Amen? What is it wrapped up in? It's wrapped up in the Holy Spirit. Once you get the Holy Spirit, you then can converse with the author of this book. Amen. It's all wrapped up. What do you have to do with the present? You got to take it out. You got to start taking it apart and looking inside it. Amen. It's all wrapped up in the present. Amen. 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 No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. He loves a relationship. He didn't say I made known to y'all. He said I made known to you. Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. You can do all these things and have not love, but it profits us nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love, for, love suffers long. Faith, hope, and love abide in these, and the greatest is what? It's love. Amen? I pray that we leave these, these doors today loving each other better. I pray if you're lost, I pray you call out to Jesus and say, Lord, save me. Stepping out on faith. Amen? Can we all stand, please? Guys, I know it's a small crowd today, and if you need prayer, you grab a hold of somebody and pray. But I pray this in Jesus' name. Don't leave until he's done with this song. Amen? Can we just stay at least one song? In front Amen. of all to see. And I know I'm not worthy.
worthy of your love but I believe you died for me so here I am take my life it's yours forgive me Lord on this day and I will thank you Lord and live my life for you in Jesus name I pray Bended knee in front of all to see, and I know I'm not worthy of your love, but I believe you died. For me, that's all it takes right there, believe it. So here I am, take my life, it's yours. Forgive me, Lord, all this day. And I will thank you, Lord. And live my life for you in Jesus' name. I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you so much for today. I thank you, Lord, for getting everybody here safely. Lord, I pray that uh, you send your angels to watch over them as they leave here. Lord, I pray for the ones that wanted to be here and they couldn't. And Lord, there's a whole lot of lights out all across North Texas. And Lord, as they sit in a dark home, I pray that God the Holy Spirit reminds them that maybe their life is a little dark spiritually and they need to be introduced to the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit just starts moving in such a mighty way that people don't see church like they used to see church anymore. Uh, Lord, I just pray that they, sit, Lord, just move about them and touch them in a way that you're allowing us to experience. Lord, you're so much more than just Sunday and Wednesday. You're so much more than just a good Sunday story. You're so much more than just a, a kid's story in a little kid's Bible. Lord, you're so much more. Lord, I pray that the lost be saved and the saved be filled. And Lord, I, I just... I just love you, and I thank you so much for today. It's a truly a blessing. It touched me, Lord. Lord, we ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and everybody who believes said, Amen, Amen. amen. Y'all don't go out them side doors, Amen. amen. Love y'all. Hey, guys, thanks again for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the sermon section. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. And I uh, just want you to know you don't have to be in church for the Lord to bless you. He will bless you right where you're sitting or standing right now. And remember that the time of salvation is right now. So if you want to call out to the Lord, you call out to the Lord right now by yourself, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. Just remember that God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's those in Christ Jesus. So I hope you're blessed. I hope you come back to see us. In Jesus' name, amen.